<laughs> we are back on Facebook. We are back. We'll preach on Facebook tonight. And everywhere else around the world. I was preaching this gospel and they cut it off completely. They cut it off completely. But we are back. We are back again. We are live. We'll preach it. <laughs> oh, dear me. They are panicking. They are panicking. I give this message to the living. It's not for Buhari. It's not for the dead. It's for the living. That's why we preach it. And that is why Elohim is with us. And that is why this very night, the walls of that very Jezebelian abode, I call it Jezebelian, because Aisha Buhari is behaving like Jezebel, a power drunk Jezebel that could not prevail over those trying to tarnish whatever is left of the Tattered image of the husband, a brutal, illiterate dictator. I just had a sip of water. And we must continue. We are back on Facebook at Namde Kano. Mazen Namde Kano, that is my Facebook. We are over 300,000, with over 300,000 followers, approaching 350,000. Because uh, DSS, they have their own as well. Their own, you know, that's how they get all the fake things that they do. Everything they copy, everything they fake. Now that I was coming in to lambast them, to tell you what the governments of the zoo are doing to their own children, Facebook decided to cut me off. <laughs> Lord have mercy. We have come that the blind may see. Not the stupid... Pentecostal thievery and deception that those that have lost their senses may be able to regain it. That those who are marginalized may be able to rise and stand on their two feet. Those enslaved set free. That those who are deceived may become wise. The zoo is rocking. The zoo is vibrating this night. <laughs> My goodness me. Everywhere, <laughs> the forces of darkness are fleeing and light is coming in. That light is the gospel of redemption, the gospel of heaven, the gospel of truth that the whole world must hear. You must hear what Pfizer did. Their experimentation on the children did not start today. From time on. I want to spread this very gospel this night. People shouldn't get fatigued. People should not get despondent. We are preaching. We are everywhere. We are preaching. And the world is listening, I assure you. Let us hear what Pfizer, what the correspondent has to say about the experimentation that Nigerian politicians did on their own people. So bringing in the Chinese and testing vaccine on people in Kanu, to them is not a new thing. They've been doing it from time. I'm sure tonight they're shocked. If Nigerians had any brain, if you see anybody who is a senator apart from uh, Abaribe, of course, they should be stoned in Abuja. How so? Stone all of them. They are criminals, all of them. <laughs> uh, yeah, they are trying to cut us off. <laughs> oh, Zoo is panicking. Zoo is panicking. And heaven is bearing us witness. <laughs> witness. That is why anything we say comes, anything I tell you come to pass. The day the zoo will bow is the day they will open up as a rock. And the Femi Adeshino will he will be so bothered that one day he will open up and say there is nobody there. And the world will say that even him is amongst the prophets. <laughs> I don't call myself a prophet. Others do. <laughs> they do. Because they see what Elohim is doing with us. They see the truth. And that truth is what set Biafra free. 
Let us hear what they said. What Facebook thought the world will not hear. We will play it tonight. Humanity will hear it. And know the shame of Nigeria. That Nigeria is a shame. Nigeria is a disgrace. Nigeria is a disgrace. An abomination. An abomination. An abomination. And what they are doing in Ohafia. They are now trying to prove a cause in Ohafia. When it starts now, they will, they will not start the story from the beginning. Channels, the lying channels TV, liars, liars and deceivers. Live, they said it's live. The president will talk to us live now, but it's recorded. Today, the man that gave you the tape is telling you it is recorded. <laughs> oh dear. Let us hear them. About a hundred of the kids were given an untested oral version of the antibiotic Trovan. Untested version was given to children like your children and my children. Because those children they were experimenting with, they also have mothers and they have fathers. Don't you, don't you feel something? Don't you have an empathy? W would you like somebody to come to your house tonight or morning or afternoon and take away your children for experimentation? Are you going to like it? Will you like it? I'm asking. Do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it is a good thing? I'm asking you. Please, I want this link shared back to everywhere it was before. That's what they're doing. So when they cut it off this way, you can know you become fatigued. Make sure that Radio Biafra page has this. That everywhere it was before, that you share it to everywhere it was before. They want to hide the truth. What Nigerian politicians are doing with their church. Have mercy. Have mercy, have mercy. Stop again. We are back. They are trying. Ne in Facebook is negotiating now with Asa Rock. Are you going to increase the money or not? He's there. He's destroying Nigeria. You increase the money or can increase the money. They are negotiating now. And once the, the money comes up, they will, they will cut off the, the broadcast on Facebook, that is. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Goodness me. Africans and wickedness. And you wonder why you have no light. They're experimenting with their own children, giving them out as guinea pigs. When I call Nigeria, uh, when I call Nigerians, that, when I say they're animals, they get upset. But you are the ones giving away your children for laboratory experimentation. Let's listen to what you did. Researchers did not obtain signed consent forms, and medical personnel said Pfizer did not tell their parents their children were getting the experimental drug. Eleven children died. Others suffered disabling injuries, including deafness, muteness, paralysis, brain damage, loss of sight, slurred speech. This was what your government gave to you. Nigerian government, Nigeria, we held it. These are the children that we are raised. Singing Nigerian national anthem, singing or reciting their pledge. I pledge to Nigeria, my country, to be faithful, loyal, and honest. And after being faithful, loyal, and honest, how did Nigeria pay them back, these little children? By handing them over as experimental guinea pigs. Some of them suffered. Let us hear what they suffered from. Because it's, it's plentiful. Deafness. Let us hear what they suffered from. Let us, let us, I think we, is, we need to hear it. The experimental drug. Eleven children died. Listen. Suffered disabling injuries, disabling, including deafness, deafness muteness, muteness, paralysis, mm -hmm. brain damage, mm -hmm. loss of sight, mm -hmm. slurred speech. Mm -hmm. The details of the case were first exposed. Are you listening? Meanwhile, as they are experimenting with your children, you that is claiming you're a good Nigerian, their own children are in England studying. They're in America. They're in boarding school. They're in prep school. They're all over the world having fun. Some of them are in hotels in Dubai, going to school from hotels in Dubai. But your own children are being given over to Pfizer and now to World Health Organization to to Bill Gates Foundation. They are being given over to the Chinese to experiment with. And you call them your leaders. <laughs> no wonder you're a tissue paper. A discarded tissue paper. You're not even an animal. You are a discarded, a used tissue paper. 
That's what they reduced you to. That's what they have done to your children. Can you see what they have done to your children? I'm asking you. Tissue paper, have you? No, sorry. Tissue paper has has uh, tissue paper has class. Discarded tissue paper, which is what Nigerians are. Have you seen what they have done to your children? <laughs> Facebook. They have cut the whole thing. They have pegged the listenership at six point five k. So that if you're joining, you say hey, it's only 6.5k listening to Nam the Khan on his page. And they have collected their money. So they have now negotiated. Let us stop at 6.5k viewers, which is translates roughly into about 70,000 viewers. That's all. Now they've, they've made, Facebook has made money now, this night. They don't have money to feed you. But they have money to pay Facebook. They have money to pay Google. They have money to pay all to stop what we are doing. To stop you from knowing the truth. To stop you from knowing that this government and those before them we are experimenting with your children. Whilst their own children are abroad studying and graduating and they are taking pictures and stealing all the money, your own kids are being used for experimentation. <laughs> I don't I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I just don't understand, honestly speaking. Honestly speaking. And the same thing that happened before is happening now once again. They are using the cover of coronavirus. So that is what they are doing. They are using the cover of coronavirus for those of you who do not know to do the same thing they did before. That is why those kids are protesting in Alemajiri North. That is why they are protesting. And I wouldn't be surprised if Google have actually removed that very news. People are protesting the same thing they did to those kids in 1996. They're now doing once again to, uh, to the ones in 2020. People's children. That is why they are protesting. That is why they are complaining. They blocked everywhere. Because there is what is now ongoing is a commercialization and industrialization of coronavirus. They never built industries for you. Remember that. When you graduate, you start driving cake and a pep, if you're lucky. Or if you graduate, you become a power tapa. It depends. It's, it's up to you which one you want to do. Or you start selling granite or pure water. A graduate, you put on your suit and tie. And you be selling granite. They never built any industries. A Jokuta steel mill that could have employed thousands of people is is moribund. The four refineries that they have is not functioning. There are no heavy industries, no textiles, nothing is working because Alamajiri is in charge. They cut a deal with some Yoruba leaders. They cut a deal with them. Let's impoverish everybody. <laughs> but one thing they can give you one thing they are willing to share with you in abundance is coronavirus and how are they doing it how are they doing it when it comes to revenue expenditure they are a work or not to get everything when it comes to exporting debt to the south they also uh, the south gets the lion's share when it comes to export of death isn't it ironic that the north that has ruled the zoo for donkeys, I mean, they, they, they are the ones, they own Nigeria, don't they? They have now decided to export death. They won't allow you to import stockfish. You can no longer bring in textiles. You can no longer bring in things anymore. All our industries are closed. The only flourishing industry in Nigeria is industry of fraud, of lies, of deception. That even the media, those that claim they are journalists, have also joined in the fraud. <laughs> so there is no hope. What are they doing? They have commercialized and industrialized coronavirus. They are not exporting it as death into the south. No, all of a sudden, no checkpoints, no customs, no duty anymore. Nobody is intercepting them. They are moving to the south and infecting populations as they do so. People said I should preach. I should preach the gospel of heaven. That is exactly what we are doing. And humanity is at a standstill.
Mankind is listening at a standstill, listening to the gospel of heaven. Direct. Some are saying they have work tomorrow. To hell with work that they must listen to this gospel. That's exactly what they're doing. I took some water, please. I bought it in a glass, which I'll be sipping as I go along. As I go along. They are exporting it. 100 alamajiris from Nasarawa we are sent into Taraba to infect. Do you see what they're doing? The Chinese will go to Kanu and infect them. Now they see, sit somewhere and start sharing the distribution. And maybe China has promised them of one lucrative contract or, or saying to them, I'll hide your money for you because they, they no longer bank their money in Europe and in the USA. The best place now to hide stolen money is in China. That is why they are cutting deals with them. That is why China can go and say, I want to experiment with your children. And they will go to village, the round up kids, Almajiri. They are the ones in big supply. Are you surprised that they're using Almajiri kids? They are the ones in, they are the cheapest to supply. And uh, life doesn't mean anything to them. You can kill as many Almajiri as possible. As long as Ganduje gets his money. And tomorrow now, you hear channels who say, we want to talk to the executive governor of Kano State, His Excellency Gantuche. <laughs> channels, they have created their own share. But you wouldn't know, would you? You won't know. <laughs> you won't know. You won't know. Unbelievable. Taraba got 100 alamajiri. Taraba, 100 alamajiri, 100. That's their own share. From the national cake. We are sharing national cake from the south. We give oil. We give gas. We give everything we have. We develop the economy. We trade. We manufacture. National cake, yes? What is the national cake that the north is bringing to share to everybody? Their own national cake. Surprise, surprise. Is coronavirus. Taraba have received their own. And also... Uh, they sent some from Sokoto, their national cake from Sokoto to under infected COVID-19 patients. Talamajiri. Do you see how wicked Fulani, do you see how evil and wicked the Fulani is? They, uh, this idiot, Femi Adesina, is there serving them. But in his state, the people he's serving, answering sa 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 to, are lying and uh, claiming that they recorded uh, uh, broadcast is live. That was before. All of a sudden, the, the thing that Femi Adesino is getting a return from those he's serving and lying about Buhari's death is a, a lorry load of infected COVID-19 alamajiri. <laughs> you see, Fulani, how clever they are. Even after serving them, their own thank you will be one truck load of infected alamajiri to your village. They have sent them to Ondo. These are the people asking for presidency in 2023. If people will be alive then to vote, I very much doubt it. Because when this thing starts to rage, <laughs> you will understand. It's not happening in Kanu. It will happen elsewhere as well. That is why we must pray very, very hard. They have sent them to Enugu. The one that was sent to Abia was intercepted. But okay, see, as was, um, men. Do you see how the whole thing works in the zoo? From our land, you can see the pipe taking our oil to the north. You can see the pipe taking the gas to the north. Everything they get. What is coming from the north down? Death. COVID-19 patients. Death. Um, is what they're sending to us. Death. <laughs> that is one Nigeria for you. And when we say we don't know part of these people, some of you don't quite understand. You can never, ever understand. Never, ever, ever. Hey, <laughs> let me tell you why we know that the zoo is gone, never to return. You know that money, they, they said uh, that a batch of loot they recovered, this consignment. You know, before the money hit the zoo, let me tell you what they said. Recovered a batch of loot to go into construction of Abuja Kaduna Road. Everything goes to the north. What comes down to the south? Coronavirus. Even before the, before the money landed, they have shared it already. They have allocated. Ask them, but who made the decision? Nobody knows. 
It depends on who is close to the U.S. ambassador at that time. People make decisions every day as they go along. There is nothing in, believe you me, go to Abuja, there is nothing, nothing is there. Nobody is there. What they are doing is to use radio and newspaper. It's like a coup to be massaging your stupidity on a daily basis. That's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. Who asked, okay, ask for me additional. Who decided where this money will go? Who? If he says he's the president, does the president have the powers to do so? The answer is no. What does the law say about recovered um, stolen goods? Who makes the decision? These are the people that, are, that locked up or Jesus or Carlo, only Samitu, who are in jail. Look at what they are doing. Ask them where that money is. Which cardinal road are you building? When is it starting? I wanted to which contract? Is it to Chinese company? I don't know. <laughs> the money has been shared already. Nigeria. Uh, uh, I placed Nigeria in my country. You are a used tissue paper. According to a Nigerian caller, to a phone in radio station, to a phone in program on a radio station. They have shared the money from Garoba Shehu. Garoba Shehu, ordinary, ordinary advisor to President of Media Matters. Ordinary advisor is now telling an entire country of 200 million people where they recovered loot. Oh my God in heaven. Oh my God. Oh my God in heaven. Oh dear. They are distributing their debt. It can never stop. And but as the money is coming, they are spending it <laughs> in the north. <laughs> they never said we use this money to cater for those who are dying, to take care of the sick. It's only the well and the living that can use Abuja, Kaduna, Kanu Road, isn't it? You have to be alive to use it. They didn't say, let us build centers for this Alamajiri we are sending to the south. No. But in the zoo, you have the army. Obasan just served in the Army Engineering Corps Division. Is that not correct? Which means you have engineers in the army. And what is happening all around the world? Let us uh, ask. In the USA, the army are building field hospitals, helping in the UK, every around the world. They are in Japan. The army is building. What has your own army done? The Engineering Corps of the Nigerian Army, Engineering Corps, what have you done? You you, you, you place to serve Nigeria to help Nigeria. What have you done? It's only to be killing people on the roadside. Manning checkpoints. This money could have gone into building holding centers for this sick and diseased Alamajiri. But because that is how wicked the Fulanis are, because people are dying in the north, people should also die in the south. Oh. They must die in the south as well. Oh. Akwe, they must die in the south. Oh. That's what they are doing. And they have sent them to the south as the used tissue paper that they are. Very sad indeed. Abacha's loot recovered. They are now saying to the world that without this money being recovered, they can no longer build roads. That's how shameless Nigeria. They are useless. Shameless. So, without Abacha loot, you cannot build roads anymore. Is that what you're saying? That without this money from Abacha, you can no longer build roads anymore. Do you see how foolish they are? This is your one Nigeria. This is, I went to Cambridge. I went to Harvard. I was at Yale. I was like, do you see? Do you see them? Do you see how they reason? <laughs> Those waiting for 2023. <laughs> I feel sorry for all of them. And Al Majri is very, very clever. I saw the tweet from that boy, Abu Abubakar Salami. Um, sorry, Abu Bakar Malami of the uh, Attorney General of the zoo. Do you know what he said? I am happy to confirm that was his tweet. I am happy to confirm that the Federal Republic of Nigeria on Monday 4th of May 2020 received 
dollars and eleven cents. Now wait for it of Abacha assets, assets from a civil servant, a career military man. He now has assets abroad worth over 300 million. <laughs> Al Majiri. This is what they do. This was my anger, which I shouldn't have spread to the whole of. Uh, of uh, I shouldn't have allowed myself to use language that could be misconstrued or misunderstood in referring to the Yoruba media practitioners. I was referring to them. Abacha assets, not loot, no. Now let us go down a little bit more to see what what uh, what the same uh, uh, Malami said uh, a while back. Uh, you know, Malami said Nigerian government. He said this thing on the sixth of February. Actually, he said Nigerian government expecting Ibori, Alamas Yega, Desiani, Aluko loots loot. The, the uh, was is from Desiani is a loot. From uh, from Ibori is a loot. From Alemas Yega, loot, not assets, so not assets. No, of course not. They are from the south. They are from Biafra. They are looters. You know what they do? This is how they go to convince, and I wouldn't say gullible, very corrupt British officials and EU that they, uh, the Fulani, they, the Janjaweed from the north, that they are clean, they don't loot, is only people from the south that steal. Simple <laughs> logic. Do you see? Do you see why you need Radio Biafra? Do you see why you need IPOB? This truth can never come to you from anywhere else. Unless from here. We want to crush the zoo. Crush it completely. And turn it into a used tissue paper. Before it turns other people into used tissue paper. You better turn the zoo into one. Or else you will become a used tissue paper. Once you are Alimas Yega, you are Ibori, you are Desian, you are Luko, uh, all these are is a loot, loot, is you've looted. But once it, you're from Janjaweed, Arewa Kornoth, you are, is your assets, uh, Abacha assets. And these are people fighting corruption. <laughs> and, uh, and corruption fights back. <laughs> These are the people that said that Bacha never stole anything. They are his assets. Oh, now we know why Buhari, before he died, said it was, um, uh, it said that, uh, that Abacha wasn't corrupt. Abacha was protecting his assets, <laughs> not loot. An ordinary first star general. <laughs> Zoological Republic. Zoo. After doing all this nonsense, this is what is getting me up. Do you see how they defend their own? Abacha is no more. Do you see how the Attorney General is defending his own? But ordinary, just IPOB and uh, ordinary Nam, the kind of fighting for the province of it was Ohaneze and the governors. And they are some of their uh, legislators in Abuja that sat at Nikelek Resort and said, why don't we kill him? But can you see how a Fulani man, Alemajiri, is defending his own Fulani, even though Abacha is in the grave? This should be an object lesson for everybody from the South, including Yoruba, it should serve as a lesson. For all of you, that you may understand. Have you seen it now? Have you seen it? I'm asking you. Can you now understand what we are saying? See how they defend their own. I assure you, if it were to be an evil man there, as I told you, hey, hey, hey criminal, he was a, a thief, a criminal. He was dragging Nigeria back, trying to play the detribalized Nigerian. But do you see Malami defending his own people? This should be a lesson to all those idiots. Ohanez and that throne and those pandev, all those, all those 
treacherous pipeline guidance from the uh, the uh, the creek of Niger Delta. Idiots everywhere. Do you see how they defend their own? Have you seen it? Niamod, have you seen it? Ike Kuremado, have you seen how Janja will defend their own? Have you seen it, idiots? Have you seen it? Headsmen are not called headsmen. They are called, um, not even headsmen. <laughs> they, are, they, are, they are pastoralists. <laughs> Terrorists are called bandits. You keep with that, they're insurgents. Do you see how they defend their own? You idiot calling yourself, you're from Niger Delta. Do you see how Janja weed from the north defend their own? You, you, a fool, a fool. Fighting IPOB and Biafra, do you see how the North defend their own? Can you see your stupidity staring you in the face in this tweet by Malami? Do you see how foolish you are? This is the truth. It is the truth. Look at how they are defending their own. And the Nemo State, Nemo State, the, the state of Mbakwe. May God rest his soul forever and ever. A great man. One of the great. I, I rank him as number three. In our all time greats. Number three. Number three. Ujuku is number one. Second is Philip Fion. Number three. Is Sam Mbakwe. None of you ever knew that Sam Mbakwe was a commander during the war. Sam Mbakwe fought. As a Biafran soldier during the war. That was why he served his people the way he did. By their fruits you shall know them. As the Janjaweed are busy defending their own. What is happening in Imo State? You have an idiot appointed by Supreme Court. Supreme Janjaweed Court. Sharia Court of the Caliphate in Abuja. Made him governor. From number four. The greatest arithmetical somersault I've ever seen from number four to number one. The idiot had some fools. His friends came into Mbise with their cattle, destroyed crops, did everything, all the damage in this world. And that fool had the temerity to ask people to pay compensation. But he can see, they can all read this tweet from Malam. How they defend their own. He is the governor of Yumo State, but he is defending the interest of the fourth most deadly terrorist group in the world, Miet Yala. And people call him My Excellency. Now you know why some of you are tissue paper. Even lower than wild beasts. There is a picture of a mere fella. I have it today. And Marka, if you are listening, please publish it. Or China said, it circulated everywhere. Picture of Emir Fele serving Funtua, serving him. Listening like a boy boy, attentively, like a boy boy, why he wants to keep his position as CBN governor. I don't know how long you have been on a nearly three hours, I think. But we have to preach his gospel from heaven. That's what I'm doing. Gospel from heaven. Mbise people in the diaspora have been asked to pay 9 million naira. My understanding is that the Aleman Jiri Supreme Court Governor of Imo State Hopus Odemma, he wants to assuage the feelings of his masters. He wants to hand over Imo State to Aleman Jiri to Mietiala. And it won't work. Without condoning whatever misfortune may have. I don't want to speak too much, Grandma. I don't like it. Our grandmothers are listening. Let me try and rephrase this. Without accepting whatever grievances that they, or issues that the Alemajri may have, the, Janj, the terrorists in Mbise, the immediate governor of Imo State, I want to ask you a question. 
I have before me now, I'm compiling a bill of all the goods and services belonging to Igbo people, belonging to Biafrans, damaged in decades of sustained riots, ethnic bigotry and religious persecution, targeted ethnic attacks against Igbo businesses in the North. I want to ask Hope Zodema, who is going to pay me? Who is going to pay Biafrans for all the damage, all the loss of lives inflicted by Mietiala and their cohorts in the north? You said that animals were killed in Mbisa, but human beings were killed in the north. Goods were destroyed, worth billions. I want to ask the Mietiala governor of Imo State, who is going to compensate us? Are you going to convene, are you going to call a governor in the north to convene a meeting in Kaduna? to discuss the Kaduna riots, the Zaria riots. Are you? If you can't, then this your stupid rubbish you're doing here cannot stand. I know they have gone to Obinze and mobilized at very short news, but I must warn them. That Mbise, as I speak to you right now, is being rigged with aerial surveillance. Any movement of troops from Obinze into Mbise to support the terrorists they have there already will be captured. And I can assure you that both White House and the State Department will be watching it live on their screen as you're moving. We're in a digital age. This is IPOB. We are not playing all those your stupid silly games anymore. I'm just warning you. Take your terrorists from Mbisa and leave that very place. We have our own bill we are going to present to the governors of the northern part of the zoo. I mean, call Arewa North. Not Middle Belt. Call Arewa North. And then we do additional subtraction. I give you my bill that runs into billions. You bring your own that is only 9 million. Then we subtract. We see who is owing who. Hope Zodema, you came into your role having been a trickster and a 419er. You were a Yahoo, Yahoo boy, you were a criminal. That was why the North picked you and chose you to become their face or their high representative in Imo State. After that disgrace, bundle of disgrace, Awara Awosa, you have failed. Because we have our own bill and somebody has to pay or somebody needs to pay. So be warned. All that nonsense you're thinking in MBC is a waste of time. MBC people are going to pay you one dime. Take all those terrorists with you and send them back to the north where they will probably catch COVID-19 and die off. Stupid people everywhere. And I remember all the time they say, oh, uh, baby factory this. There, there is a news I want people to Google, please. And send it to all those Alamajri forums, all of them. It is called Survivors of Nigeria's Baby Factories. They share their stories. Look at what is happening in Janjaweed North. Anywhere you see them writing rubbish, just take the link and give it to them. I will read again. Google this, please. Survivors of Nigeria's baby factories share their stories. These are from Janjaweed, Alamajri North. See what they're doing to them. It is the ones they cannot sell in these baby factories that they bring out as Alamajri. They breed like rabbit. Which is very, very sad indeed. They breed like rabbits. But of course, once they've been born, you have to like them or love them because they're human beings. They are children. Somebody's selling them. It shouldn't be happening. This is the pro industrialized baby factories in the north. Google it. It's from Al Jazeera. That is their business. Because it's either they're benefiting from Boko Haram or from. Po Remember, oh, from time, they're either benefiting from polio. They are benefiting from, uh, from what's that, river blindness, remember? This was before Bukharam came on uh, as a money spinner for them. All the, now is now according to me, every decade in the north, there is one disease or pestilence or the other. They will run to abroad to beg money. Give us money. We have elephantiasis. We have a meningitis. Remember meningitis? Remember um, um, river blindness? 
Remember polio? Now, all these were big money spinners for the North. Now, uh, things are getting, uh, it's no longer lucrative. They dived into terrorism, Boko Haram. And as they were milking, making their money from Boko Haram and terrorism, then the Lucifer bought out their bread for them and gave them Corona. That is the highest fraud going now, coronavirus. And that's why they're distributing it. So how are you taking care of coronavirus? Oh, we are sharing them to states. And you're a Nigerian. You are in Nigeria. And you're seeing all these alamaj, they come to your town, your streets, your village. All you can do is, hey, um, may God help us. <laughs> hey, zoological republic. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That is what is happening in the zoo. And that is why we insist that we must preach this very gospel. And I want you to understand something. I, would, I never, to be honest with you, I never had, I would call it a privilege to listen to this man called Audu Ogbe. But I must say, you know, it's not good to criticize a book if you've not read it. After listening to Audu Ogbe in this very fantastically fabulous interview, I have respect for the man, I'm being honest with you. Because there is something called the making of stupidity. The reason why I chose to study political economy rather than law as my father wanted me to was because economics and politics, I'm telling you the truth, the marriage of economics and politics, which is political economy, which is an important and critical phase that every society must go through in order to survive, is 90% common sense. You see, economics, it is 90%. There is no, you don't need to study PhD to PhD level to understand basic, simple economics. That for your economy to become viable, you must at least produce 60% of the goods you consume. Very simple and neat. Or your exports should be more than what you import. Your thread balance should be in the positive rather than negative. In black rather than red. Simple common sense. You don't need PhD to do that. You don't need PhD for somebody to tell you that graduates leaving universities need factories to go to work. You don't need the rocket science. It's common sense. I said I'll read economics and politics. Then today, I came across this interview by this I will do a way. It gave me a fresh perspective altogether into the thinking of this very man. Very brilliant. But I'm not, I don't know if he's corrupt or not. I don't know his details. But judging from what I have read, he was a very fine, brilliant man. Let's listen to him and learn why not just the zoo, but the whole of Africa is in a mess. And you know me, I, I love intelligent people. Not intelligent people or stupid grammar, big, big grammar with no brain. Listen to what he has to say. How do I wait? One of the tragedies of Africa is that we have very little regard for history. In fact, now it has been cancelled in our schools. Where were we 40 years ago, 50 years ago? What have we learned from other societies like India and China and Brazil? We copy a bit too quickly and too wrongly from elsewhere. And we also copy from the wrong sources. Mm -hmm. In 1986, we had this thing called the structural adjustment. Listen carefully. Listen. destroyed most countries in Africa. Everything. And I'm sorry to say, I am not an economist. I was in Hong Kong visiting with a friend when we heard on television that the auctioning began in April. Some auctioning of, of our national currency. Yeah, exactly. And it was three naira to one dollar. 1986. Yes. And three naira to one dollar. Three naira to one dollar. Now it's 9,500. common sense. Why are you auctioning your currency when what to do is to cut down on imports and boost and stimulate export. local produ production? Why are you... Cut down on imports and stimulate local production. Common sense. They couldn't do it. Now listen to what happened. Structural adjustment program. Who was in power then? The North. <laughs> 
They ruined everything. It was them that ruined Nigeria. Nigeria that is on the floor today is Alemajiri, Janjaweed from the north. Who are the ones bringing governance down, ridiculing the essence of democracy? The same Janjaweed north. That is why Buhari is dead and they're hiding it, using ordinary rubber face mask and the software. To be deceiving all of you. Let's listen to this very brilliant man. I never met him before, but I think he made a lot of sense. Shipping in rice. That one began as far back as 1982. A task force on the importation of rice. I was a young man in the cabinet. I was 34 years old. And I asked the question, why not a task force for the production of rice? I was told, oh, you guys from the university, you don't know anything in the interim. I love this. Because any time you give them advice in the zoo in those days, when we thought uh, they were human beings, they, ah, oh, hey, it won't work here. That thing you're saying, it may work in London. Oh. <laughs> That's the way we do things here. <laughs> oh, dear. Zoological Republic. <laughs> uh, let's just import. Listen. The bill rose to $5 million a day and remains so for nearly 30 years. From the Taiwanese. Yes. Taiwan, Importing rice from Taiwan. Thailand, Vietnam, and even India. You just ship your money out and shipping goods. And once the structural adjustment came, we added on to it free trade. So we opened our windows, our doors, our roofs, and any foreign good was arriving. Well, in. Plastics that wouldn't last an hour in the child, the hand of a child as toys, honey, sugar, milk, tooth. They were even importing honey, milk, sugar, toothpick. This is from a minister. He served in the cabinet. He was a minister. This is the country that I need you to wake up. And say, I'm, pr I'm a proud Nigerian. We proud Nigerians. Anyway, mo monkey. Monkeys everywhere. Let's listen. Six handkerchiefs, uh, pins on the table. They import handkerchiefs. We produce nothing. If you go to your house and look around, practically everything. Uh, what is it that is made here? Almost nothing. And we said it was perfect. Why? Oil and gas money. And imagine the economies. Oil. Send the proceeds to sustain other economies and bring in their goods. Along with the goods, unemployment and poverty. Started. Yeah. yeah. So then, we lost all our... Uh, 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 they said our radio station is cut off. I don't know from where. But we are transmitting from here. Our signals are correct. I don't know how they can say that our station is cut off. I need confirmation, please. From where is this cutting off happening? I want to know, are we cut off on radio? Are we cut off on radio? Please, deputy, confirm. Are we cut off on radio? I want to understand. I want to understand. They are saying radio is cut off. I do not believe it. I do because I can see we are live here and we are direct. And the monitors are showing everything to be green. So how can we be cut off? How can we be cut off? Somebody said, Wata Etoko said I should stop teaching the zoo. <laughs> I, I, I have to because I am a humanist. I want everywhere to be developed. I want every aspect. I want everybody, not just in the in the zoo called Nigeria, but West Africa and Africa. I want people to have a decent life. Everybody, not just myself and my family. Everything I want for my children, I also want for other people's children as well. That is who I am. So anything we can do to help them to grow their economy, we are going to do it. They said our radio is cut off. I need confirmation, please. Is our radio cut off in Enugu for about an hour? Well, what is going on? What is going on? I need to know. Is our satellite working? Is the satellite working? I want to know if our satellite is working. I need confirmation. Somebody said I should proceed. And I must do so. I must do so. I have to proceed. That was Aoudoube who served in the cabinet of Alemajiri Janjaweed. They have ruined the economy. Fulani has nothing to upstairs. They have nothing to contribute. Only stealing and cutting deals with criminals like themselves. And when I hoped or I had hoped or wished that um, we have people coming up from the West to support this very agenda of liberation, this very agenda of hope and regeneration, a, a man that I happen to respect very much, Professor Banji Akintoye, 
I, uh, I sadly read in Vanguard newspaper that the Yorubas are no longer demanding for a breakup. <laughs> oh dear me. The Yorubas are no longer demanding for a breakup of Nigeria, that they were merely agitating for freedom. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think in a way he's right as well. He's agitating for freedom, freedom within Nigeria, outside Nigeria. That needs to be clarified later. So I'm asking Professor Banjak Kinto to please try and clarify for us because I saw him as a rallying point, as a voice of consistency alongside Pai Adebanjo as well. And so when I heard this, I was a bit troubled. I hope that he will provide some measure of clarification going forward, please. Very, very important. I don't want a man that I have enormous respect for to pull back at this very stage. We have an announcement to make from South Africa. I want the South Africa rep to please come online to be able to make this very important and critical announcement this very evening. And whilst we are waiting for him to come on board, we must not forget our 30th of May. Very, very important. 30th of May is very, very critical. Please wait, our South Africa rep, wait where you are. I will come to you in a minute. We have our 30th of May, we must not forget. We are going to have three days of fasting and prayer, starting from the 27th to end midnight of the 29th. Very, very important. We are going to read and pray all the Psalms in the Holy Book. From Psalm number 1 to 150, if you read 10 Psalms, you pray. Prayer and fasting for three days and then conclude it with a prayer on the midnight of the 29th. And then this year we are going to have a candlelight vigil, a procession in the middle of the night, ushering in the 30th of May. We have sat at home so much that I will also encourage people to sit at home on that very day, please, for us to honor those that fought that we may live. I will now go to our South Africa representative to introduce himself and make a very important announcement. Please go ahead. Can you listen to the phone and not via your system, please? Go ahead. Good evening. I can hear you. Yes, go ahead. Dear friends all over the world, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, depending on your time zone. My name is Men Mazi Chidevele, Chukwu de Obiuku. By social grace of Chukwu Kadiyama. I'm from OKTT, OKTT in Anambra, Biafra land. I serve the indigenous people of Biafra. Can you move away from your radio? You are very close. There is that. There is an echo. Move away from your listening device. Move away from your radio and talk to me just via the phone, please. Move away from your radio. There is an echo coming back. Go ahead. Okay. I serve the indigenous people of Biafra as PLO, DOS, and also the Southern African Regional Lab. We are friends all over the world. I thank you all for the great job that you people are doing for our fatherland. This time, I want to use this opportunity to let Biafra know that we are getting there. Biafra is here. Don't lose hope. Don't listen to the, our enemies. Those people that think that we are joking. It's not that we realize that the Biafra is here. And those people who think that we don't know what we are doing. Not 
Go, go. They want the announcement. Go straight to the announcement and make the announcement, please. People are waiting. They want to hear the announcement. Make the announcement. Go ahead. First of all, I started from South Africa. There is a group called Biafra Union in South Africa, which many of our members, IPOB here, are into. And also there is an Ohanese in that group, which I'm giving this announcement right now. Those are hardcore members of IPOB that into that group. I want you to remove yourself in that group. Let those people that in Ohanese, let them go and join IPOB. We have only IPOB, one IPOB in South Africa. So if you are a member of IPOB and you are still in that group, after this announcement, if we find out that you are still on that group called Biafra Union in South Africa, we are going to be suspended. If you want to join IPOB in South Africa, we can join by calling our national coordinator. The name of our national coordinator is Baz Chidevel Odo again. You can call him on plus 27 749 Secondary, we are moving to Angola. There's a problem that we are having in Angola. I want to clarify the issue. We have only one IPOB family in Angola. Heading by our national coordinator, Mazi Magnus Onyekachi Madoka. Mazi Magnus Onyekachi Madoka is our national coordinator in Angola. Deputized by Cplen Njoko. Mazi Magnus Madoka, you can reach him on plus two four four nine two five four eight three eight three zero. Again, plus two four four nine two five four eight three. 830. You can even get his deputy, Madison Joko, or plus 244 939 888 555. Also, in the same Angola, we have only two zones for now Nzango zone and the popular zone. Our zona coordinator in Zango zone is Mazi Chukunonso Okafo. Mazi Chukunonso Okafo is our zona coordinator in Zango zone. You can reach Mazi Chukunonso Okafo on plus 244 923-659-348. Again, plus two four four nine two three six five nine three four eight. His deputy is Mazi Chukuka Wajika. You can reach Mazi Chukuka Wajika or plus two four four nine three eight six five eight two nine one. On the proposal, we have I, 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 oh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I think, I think, I think what we need to, to do, Razo Biku, is this. They have gotten the number of the national coordinator and the deputy national coordinator. Anybody in Angola wishing to be part of our family or who is confused as to where to belong, 
should call the national coordinator or the deputy who will now direct them to the rest of the people. So I will ask you to once again repeat those two numbers for the national coordinator and for the deputy, please. Go ahead. Okay, for the national coordinator, which is Mazi Magunu Sone Kachi Madoka, is plus 244-925-483-830. And his deputy, Mazi Plen Joko, plus 244-939-88555. Thank you very much. Wait, no, 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 no other zone. That is enough. That is enough. Those are the. Any anything else? Yes. Those in popular zone, there's the people they are patrolling themselves as a zonal coordinator, which our HOD have already dissolved and giving suspension. The name of that Mazi is Mazi. And Mazi Chris Okori. These two people have been suspended from the popular zone in IPOB. Whosoever that are following those people must be, be careful. Chasimba and the Chris Okori, they are no more coordinator in popular zone since last year. But now they are patrolling themselves as a coordinator. Which they are, was suspended. Also, I wish to let all our people in Southern Africa, if you have any family or friends or well wishers living in Zambia, Tanzania, Namibia, Burundi, Botswana, please you can reach me or plus two seven three one four one six seven eight six one for us to start a family in those countries, Zambia, Tanzania, Namibia, Burundi, Botswana. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. That was from our, because we have to bring the program to an end. Thank you, Mazo Biku. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Uh, if you know you have been suspended from the family in Angola, you know what to do. You remain suspended. That was the announcement by our South Africa um, rep that represents all the countries of South Africa, not just South Africa itself, but um, Mozambique and all the rest of them. The uh, entire southern part of that very beautiful continent of Africa. I thank all of you very much for listening this very evening. And as always, and without hesitation, I proclaim very proudly that Biafra is our religion here on radio biafra is where we worship because elohim is our god i thank you very much for listening from me from here it is good evening